friends and comrades first of all revolutionary greetings on this very happy occasion to every member of kerala shastra sahitya parishad when i received the telephone call from your president that i am being invited for this conference i was first completely taken aback because i do not deserve to be here but then it was an honor being given to me for which i would not have traded even the entire world it was an honor for many reasons that kerala shastra sahitya parishad has been probably only organization in the world of its kind which has given birth to huge massive projects the projects that humanity had never seen before the large project bharat gyan vigyan jatha which turned touched more than 5 crore people in about 40 days it is kerala shastra sahitya parishad because of which we small groups sitting in delhi and haryana and various parts of the country came together and gave birth to people science movement which was largest movement at that time which humanity had ever seen in the name of science and kala it was an honor because i recollect that this very movement which was started by a very small handful of young scientists and scholars in kerala gave birth to a massive project called literacy movement in the country these are the achievements which really elate me here just because i am standing before you so i have come here for my personal reasons friends when i look back at the project called scientific temper one will have to go back a little bit into history of the country imagine a society which is completely divided imagine a society which is divided across caste lines religion the way we eat food the way we wear and present ourselves the way we talk to each other it's completely culturally divided society which existed in this particular land mass for me malayalam is a language which is as alien as french or german or japanese or chinese and probably for you sitting here no uh, ahamia is a language which probably is as alien as any language in a foreign country so this country was completely divided it was not ever united there was no concept of one nation and historians have debated this issue for long and are divided into two camps that india is as old as 5000 years but some of them say that it was only the freedom movement that gave us the identity i believe in those historians who say that 1857 was a major turning point in the history of the country and it is only after that when we were defeated the mutiny was crushed with brutal boots and a reign of terror which humanity had never seen was perpetrated in this country by the british imperialism that later 
the leadership which emerged, the political leadership which emerged, had to think of creating an identity which could bind everybody. Because the enemy was gigantic. It was so big, all powerful and all present. They kept on telling us that British Raj, in British Raj, sun doesn't set. So they were big, huge, gigantic. Against this other, the other, one had to create a movement. And for that, you needed a gigantic Indian identity. And that is how Indian identity was created. What was the mortar and material with which this identity was created in this completely divided society? In a society where there was no concept of equality of human beings, in a society where there was no com concept of equality of men and women, women were considered to be equal to the animals. And it is in our literature that they are called like animals and they should be treated as animals. In a society where there was no concept of education for all, because education was only for the upper caste, and if a shlok was heard by the lower caste, you could kill them. You could pour molten sisa into their ears. In a society where there was no concept of property for all, property was domain of only the upper caste. The Dalits couldn't own property. So there was no concept of equality. And here is this freedom movement which propagates these ideas in order to build a gigantic, a big self. And this self was constructed on secular ideas. It had to have equality of human beings because even the last person had to participate in this freedom movement, otherwise it would have failed. And it took 90 years to propagate these ideas in the country. Soviet Union and the Russian Revolution inspired the entire humanity, but our freedom movement was also inspired by that. Communist Party played a huge role in creating the basis for propagating these ideas. The left of the center, those who sacrificed their lives, created an atmosphere where these ideas could be propagated against the structure that was very old and very, very oppressive. And then India gets independence. The constitution against what the society was and how the society thought epitomized, collected these ideas and put them in writing. The question that I ask, those who adopted this constitution and signed it in the parliament, did they believe in these ideas? Did all of them believe in this idea? Maybe Nehru believed in it because he had already written a book where he had talked about scientific temper. Maybe Gandhi believed in it. Maybe com communist leadership and some of the members believed in those ideas of equality of human beings, equality of gender, education for all, and job for all. But these, did these 600 people who signed the constitution, more than them, believe? No. And I can assure you, 
a majority of them never ever practice these ideas in their own lives they treated most of them who sign treated their own wives and daughters as probably animals and never gave them equality so the question is why did they sign it why such a beautiful constitution was given to the people of india starting with with we the people of india the only answer that i could find is that most of them thought that these leaders like nehru and gandhi and patel and left of the center leaders they know good language they know best of the ideas they can write very well so let them put a book there in the shelf we can't write such good books so we are incapable of creating a book called constitution of india but the other thing was most important they were very confident that this caste structure this divisive structure this oppressive structure will remain intact the power balance will not change it will remain in our hand so let them write nothing will change and since britishers have gone we'll rule the country but no things changed nehru's book i'm sure most of you must have read was written in 1945 published in 1946 he was in jail writing this book about 5 10 pages have been devoted to scientific tempo nehru becomes the first prime minister he keeps on talking about scientific tempo in various debates he is a person who defines it in many ways one of the definition is that scientific tempo is applying scientific methods and ideas beyond the four boundaries of a laboratory the other one is where he says in his book that it is the courage to reject old ideas in the face of new data and information at one more place he says that scientific temper is a temper of a free man i think today it would be considered as politically incorrect statement because he has used man word there but look at the beauty of the language itself in a short sentence he is saying that a free man has to have scientific temper and if you do not have scientific temper you cannot be a free man but the question is again amazing and it bothered me for a long time for 100 years more than 100 years this debate has gone on in our country and biggest stalwarts have discussed it repeatedly but a politician who cannot be called a scientist by any stretch of imagination gives this beautiful term to the country called scientific temper why does it come from a politician why not from a scientist and the answer is again twofold this generation of politicians is being groomed in an environment where you have the best of the minds around them take gandhi nehru any one of them 
and I do not want to talk in details about the communist leadership. They were the great minds, but they also attracted great minds. The best of the poets, the best of the musicians, the best of the scientists, the best of the writers were around them. They were interacting repeatedly with the best of the mind, not only from within India, but from the world. That is how this leadership was being groomed. And that is why in an environment where political struggle was going on, there was a space created for those 40, 50 young men to create an organization called Kerala Shastra Sahitya Parishad. That is why a resolution in the parliament was passed, which is known as scientific policy resolution. That is why there was freedom given to scientific community and science communicators to work and organize the people. Now look at the history of scientific policy resolution. It's a resolution, obviously, initially probably created by people like S.S. Bhatnagar, Baba, and many other scientists. But final draft has a strong imprint of Nehru's language. It creates history in many ways. Till now, no parliament in the world has passed such a resolution, which is known as scientific policy resolution. In parliament, most of the time what happens is when a bill is introduced or a resolution is introduced, you give it a number, a title, and then its copies are distributed and somebody rises and says that bill is introduced. Now let's begin the uh, discussion on it. And then opposition is given to given a chance to tear it apart. There is disagreement on this sentence and that sentence and this section and that section and government or whoever has introduced is criticized left and right and asked to change the words here and there. This is a historical again resolution which is introduced. The Prime Minister of the country rises and says that this resolution is important for the country's future. Therefore, I am going to re read each and every word of this resolution. He reads it completely. Every word is important. That is what he says. And then what is the attitude of the opposition? Mainly left. They criticize Nehru for not introducing it earlier. They say it's such an important resolution that you should have brought it much earlier. So there is a consensus around what is a hazy idea, a very nebulous idea called scientific temper. This is when the entire country is dreaming about a future based on scientific temper. And therefore, amazingly, People's Science Movement, initiated and ignited by Kerala Shastra Sahit Parishad, gets the government support. We get money from Department of Science and Technology, NCSTC, to propagate science. Cut to 2014 and later period. Where has this leadership come from? By this time, when we were trying to create scientific temper in the country, KK is sitting here, my friends are sitting here. There were others who were trying to create modern, big, 
factories to churn out most rabid superstitious ideas and they are called babas today these are the factories which produce products and which started producing products in 1980s an atmosphere was created in the country to disseminate these products across every section of society some laughable some not laughable but these factories grew and if you look at the 10 top of them their turnover today is more than 25000 crore it's huge most of the scientific institutions cannot boast of a few crores of yearly budget so they are big they were created and then there was a nexus that shaped during 90s and after that between the bourgeoisie the political leadership and this group of babas so the attack started and it was intense right from the beginning imagine now a country the biggest democracy where prime minister rises and says to a gathering of doctors that we had plastic surgery in ancient india ganesha is shown as the proof of it he talks about all kinds of things such as you can make tea with nale ki gas he tells young ones that there is no global warming happening people get old so they feel hot and cold he goes to canada and tries to solve and tell them the equation of a square plus b square something and goes on and on and falters you can say and you can laugh at it but it's something very serious for me because when prime minister writes a book and devotes 10 pages to scientific temper it becomes a policy document later on and when a prime minister says that ganesha is the proof of the plastic surgery then it becomes a policy statement it's not some baba now giving a bhashan which can be rejected by scientific community of the country it's a serious thing and down the line now the message goes that you can mix as you want myths with scientific facts the boundaries are completely blurred a judge says that मोर आंसुओं से प्रजनन करता है वन एम पी कैन राइज एंड सेज मूव योर हैंड ऑन द बैक ऑफ द काउ लाइक दिस देन योर ब्लड प्रेशर विल गो अप एंड इफ यू डू लाइक दिस द प्रेशर विल कम डाउन समबडी कैन से दैट करोना कैन बी फॉट विथ काउ यूर इन now somebody can say with impunity that cow dung can be used against atomic bombs one of the chief minister can say with impunity 
that we had all the technology because we had internet therefore we had satellite and if we had satellite we had the rocket and if we had rocket we also had missiles and if we had missiles then we also had atomic bombs now this is the india we are living together the intense attack on scientific temper across the country is the reality of today and it is only organizations like kerala shastra sahitya parishad which can lead the resistance so your responsibility has increased immensely in these dark times friends a history was again created for the first time three academies science academies came together and issued a statement against the minister who said that since my elders and i have not seen monkey getting transformed into human beings therefore i do not believe in darwin's theory of evolution and therefore it should be removed from our curriculum science academies in independent india never gave any in statement and we had almost given up on science academies that they will ever protest but they did protest but i don't think that the onslaught that we are witnessing today can be resisted by scientific community and as i said that people science movement today has the responsibility to give a challenge but it sounds very good when i say i stand here you may clap it may sound great the challenge is much more bigger than what can we imagine today today no nccstc will come and support the institutions have been com completely captured today there is no official support that you can ever expect other than the government of probably kerala bjp and rss have very successfully changed the culture of political activities as well as culture in the country anti science statements clubbed with violence are going to pose a much much bigger challenge and comrades i have again again and again said whenever i have come to kerala that you cannot create an island of progressive thoughts in a corner of a country where bourgeoisie is out there to implement fascistic ideas you cannot sustain it for a long time so either you have to expand or there will be such intense attack at some given point of time that will be paying a much heavier price therefore i plead that this conference and i'm sure you will take steps towards that must introspect that the times have completely changed you have to become the power house of generating progressive ideas and defending scientific temper 
you have to again gather all the forces in the country and they are strong, quite strong as of now and launch some All India programs. You have to inspire the younger generation as you had inspired it in 1980s and 90s. It is only KSSP which can take this challenge because it is still ignites imagination of people's science movement in the country. And I'm sure my comrades sitting here will definitely stand up. The call is there. Indian people are calling you. Lead the movement in the country. Do not confine yourself to Kerala only. Comrades, the last thing I would like to say is that we have done great wonders in the past. One of the evidences of what we did in 80s was great is that Till 1990s, this society, which is called Indian society, for maybe 2,000 years or 4,000 years or 5,000 years, I don't want to go into that, but at least for 1,000 years, had never ever seen openly and celebrated eclipse. In 90s, because of our efforts, KK's effort, my friend's effort, for the first time, this society came out on the roads and celebrated eclipse. Today, at least my research says that people completely rejected during Corona all the regressive, mythical ideas. So people are waiting for you. And I'm sure in any part of the country, you wouldn't have seen somebody sitting with a bottle full of cow urine and spraying on your hand so that you can save yourself from Corona. But almost every corner of the country, every nook and corner of the country was with a bottle of sanitizer, which was told to them by scientific community. People are waiting for you. And I'm sure you will fulfill your responsibility. I'm extremely once again thankful and give you best wishes. Thank you.